chapter 10. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and to the writers that write iniquity, to turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right of the poor of my people, that widows may be their spoil, and that they may make the fatherless their prey. And what will you do in the day of visitation, and in, the, in ruin which will come from far? To whom will you flee for help, and where will you leave your glory? They can do not except crouch under the captives and fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Asher, the rod of mine anger, in whose hand as a staff is my indignation, I do send him against an ungodly nation, and against the people of my wrath do I give him a charge, to take the spoil and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. However, he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations, not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes all of them kings? Is not Calno as Carchemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Shemaria as Damascus? As my hand hath reached the kingdoms of the idols, whose graven images did exceed them of Jerusalem and Shemaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Shemaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass, that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon the Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. For he hath said, By the strength of my hand have I done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, in that I have removed the bounds of the peoples, and have robbed their treasures, and have, and have brought down as one mighty the inhabitants. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the peoples, and as one gathereth eggs that are forsaken, hath I, have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or chirped. Should the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Should the saw magnify itself against him that moveth it? As if a rod should move them that lift it up? Or as if a staff should lift up him that is not wood? Therefore will the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among the fat ones leanness, and under his glory there shall be kindled a burning like a burning of fire. And the light of Israel shall be for fire, and his one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. And the glory of the forest and of his fruit fulfilled, he will consume both soul and body, and it shall be as when a sick man wastes away, and the remnant of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them down. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and they that are escaped of the house of Yechab, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, Jacob, unto God the Mighty. For though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them shall return, and extermination is determined, overflowing with righteousness. For an extermination wholly determined shall the Lord, the God of hosts, make in the midst of all the earth. Therefore thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of Asher. Though he smite you with the rod, and lift up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt, for yet a little while, and the indignation shall be accomplished, and mine anger shall be to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up against him a scourge, as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his rod was over the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall depart from off your shoulder, and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed by reason of fatness. He has come to Aeoth, he has passed through Migron. At Michmas he layeth up his baggage. They are gone over the pass. They have taken up their lodging at Geba. Ramah trembleth. Gibeath Shah is fled. Cry you with a shrill voice, O daughter of Galim. Hearken, O Laish, O you poor Anathoth. 
Madmana is in mad flight. The inhabitants of Gabim flee to cover. This very day shall he hot it no shaking his hand at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bows with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the lofty shall be laid low, and he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. Okay, let's go back up to verse 1. And yesterday we were basically talking about these judgments of God, and God was going to make an example now, and he's going to, and we're going to find out now, at the end of the last chapter, God's hand was stretched out still, and we're going to find out God's hand is stretched out still, there's nothing changed, nothing's going to change. Verse 1, Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and to the writers that write iniquity. Woe unto you, shame on you, you that write these unrighteous decrees, that make these laws of gain, that make these rules of unrighteousness, that cause the people to err, not teaching them the truth. And to the writers that write iniquity, that write evilness, that write this, these things that ain't correct. Those of you that make these writings of, of error, too, to turn aside the needy for judgment and to take away the right of the poor of my people, the, that widows may be their spoil, and that they may make the fathers their prey. And we talked about this a little bit in the in the last chapter, what they do is they've come in in, a, in, a, in peaceful teachings to destroy the men. And by taking away the men, they do, do create widows and the fatherless, for there's nobody to lift up the law. There's nobody to teach the law. And by doing this, they take away the right of the poor, this, this right of grace, this right even under the law. We have the law of the tithes, and every third year you have to give your tithes up, see. And this would be a fast, see, because every two years do you get all, all your bounty, and then the third year you lay it up for the poor. See, and this is one of the great sins that goes undone. Three, and what will you do in the day of visitation? and in the ruin which shall come from far? To whom will you flee for help, and where will you leave your glory? And that what's going to happen to you now? Because, see, God's going to require the stone, his stone of foundation that he's made for stumbling. See, and then what are you going to do? This is the law of God, and, the, and it's the law of God that brings salvation. For God gives salvation, no other. What will you do in this day, in this day of visitation now? There's no place to hide. I've done warned you this. So you should flee the city now. For they can do not except crouch under the captives and fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And the hand of God is still stretched out. And what will they do in that day? Hide under the corpses? Crouch under the captives? Hide there among them? Now, well, that's all they can do because, see, they, there's nowhere to go. There's no place to hide. And they shall fall under the slain, and with the slain shall they fall. Five, O oh, Asher, the rod of mine anger, in whose hand as a staff is my indignation, and this Asher, once again, is this altar they built there, this step up, step forward, progress. See, they thought they was making some progress by doing this. They're, they're making progress, yes, because, well, we find out God has been building this up for quite some time. And Asher is this example of it. The rod of mine anger, see, it's a rod, it's a, a rod of punishment. It's the staff of his indignation, even this stored-up anger against. Why? Because they've erred. They went chasing after idolatry, imputing things that unto God, unto their idol. Six, 
I do send him against an ungodly nation and against the people of my wrath. Do I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets? And that's what he was doing at this time. He was using the king of Assyria, see, to come in and punish the people of Israel just like he does today. He uses this king of this alternative altar to punish now all the nations as we're going to find out even all the earth and he does give him charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to trade them down like the mire of the streets to take the booty to take the prey see, and to tread them down seven however he meaneth not so neither does his heart think so but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations not a few. And that's the purpose of it all, see. It is not to bring forth a deliverance of the, of the many. But see, it, we're going to find now, uh, it is to bring forth a remnant, even this particular people that God has sought from the beginning, these ones that finally understand, who are going to become obedient to the law, who God's going to go before and drive everything else out, just like he promised in the beginning. There's nothing different. You've got to be obedient to the law, though. Eight, for he saith, Are not my princes all of them kings? All of them are kings. All of them are kings, he says. They all dress in their kingly garments. They all think they are righteous. See, this is where the words of a man have lifted you up, and, and you have erred now. In thinking you do so, because we're going to find out it. This is how the king of Assyria came in and took over. Nine is not Calno as Carchemish, is not Hamath as Arpad, is not Shemaria as Damascus. So we're going to use these comparisons of these cities. Is not Calno? Calno is the fortress of Anu. Anu was placed in the city of Nimrod. Even. And Carchemish is also that fortress of Kamash. And we remember Kamash. Kamash was one of the idols they served, and as well as Anu. And Kamash was the one they made the young girls pass through the fire. It's not Hamath as Arpad. And Hamath is this wall of stones stacked up. This is like a fortress they've tried to make for themselves. This is what it, uh, it is an example to to God. And Hamath is as Arpod. Arpod is spread out. And even like these stones stacked up in a wall spread out. And we're going to find out what the, what, what's this building. Enclosures. This is building enclosures just like in the land of Egypt, even this land of enclosures, is not Shemaria as Damascus, is not this place of dregs the same as this place of sackcloth where the sackcloth weaver is working silently. And it is, and it is, any time you practice idolatry, and that's what was going on, and that's what is going on. This is what's going to happen. And over and this over a period of time does this take place? Over a great period of time does your example show in the earth until finally it's reached its full. Ten, as my hand has reached the kingdoms of the idols whose graven images did exceed them of Jerusalem and of Shemaria, and this is what he's claiming. His hand has reached into the kingdoms of the idols, even these graven images, and we're talking about Assyria. Assyria was that great land of, of idolatry, and at that time there was every image that you could think of, and these the, the children of Israel had done, moved in and was taken over in this way. See, Ephraim had gone in and, and set up and made friends with the double fruited, see, and made a league with, and Shemaria, even this place of dregs, it was the capital of Ephraim. 11. Shall I not, as I have done unto Shemaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? And we see God was making an example even for Judah, even for Jerusalem, 
at that time. He was using Israel as an example for them. And they couldn't understand it. And they continued in the practices of idolatry. And they had it all set up. And it was all through the land. Both sides. Both nations even. That are one. Divided by God. That we'll, we'll find out now. Twelve. Wherefore it shall come to pass. That when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. And we're going to find out in the end time. That's, that's, that's the whole purpose, see. God has set it up. It's a form of punishment. God's using the, this, this oppressor, even the king of Assyria, this king of the Asher, this king of the step, this king of the altar, this king of the of the progress, as a punishment against the children of Israel. But in the end, we're going to see God's going to tarnish and punish him. Why? Well, he said it was by his own strength. Thirteen, for he said, "By the strength of my hand have I done it, and by my wisdom." For I am prudent, in that I have removed the bounds of the peoples, and I and have robbed their treasures, and have brought down as one mighty the inhabitants. So he's claiming that he's done all this. He's claiming that he's the one that's brought all this around by his great wisdom. For he is the prudent one. He is the one of knowledge. He is the one that cares about the next generation. He's removed the bounds of the people. He's removed the borders of and has robbed their treasures and has brought down the mighty at the inhabitants. And see, and that's that's what happens. Their treasures are robbed. Why? He's counted as all wisdom and all understanding. And this is what happens. 14, and my hand has found a nest, the riches of the people's, and as one gathereth eggs that are forsaken, I have gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing, or that opened the mouth, or chirped. And we're going to find out. See, this great victory was given by God. It's a punishment now, because you've erred. You've turned from the, the word of God. You've turned from the law of God. And we're going to find, see, this was your reward. See, and they say, oh, we have received a great reward. You have received punishment. For your sin. And we're going to see now. They think they found a nest. They think they found a place to gather the riches of the people. Like somebody gathering up eggs that are forsaken. Hey, these don't belong to nobody. He gathered all the earth. Every nation. Every nation we find it there. And nobody. Not a wing moves or opened a mouth or chirped. There's nobody said nothing. It's taken place over a great period of time. And we're going to find out, see, that this is all God. No other God does this. Should the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Should the saw magnify itself against him that moves it? As if a rod should move them that lift it up? Or as if a staff should lift up him that is not wood. Should the axe say to the one that swings it, I have more strength than you? Since he formed not only the axe, but does you with it? No. Should the saw magnify itself against him that moves it? Against him that uses it? Against him that even formed it? Sharpens it? Sets the teeth thereof. How shall the saw have more knowledge than him that uses it? See. This all has one meaning. This all has one understanding. This is all the work of God. None of the work can say to God. Hey, I am the one that does this by my strength. See God used Asher at that time to punish. See. Why? But they had turned from God. They had went after idolatry. God had sent the prophets saying, turn, return, but nobody did. 
See, nobody did. This is the great example of the end time. Even turn. As if a rod should move then to lift it up. Does the rod come against the one that lifts it up? Is this, does the, who lifts up the standard? See, does the standard say to him that lifts it up? You don't have no understanding. Or as if a staff should lift up him that is not wood. This staff, this thing they walk on, this, this is the thing they walk on when you use the staff to stand up. It's, it's not the staff that lifts you up. It's by the, your own strength. The staff would just stand there. It's wood. It's made of nothing. Made by the hand of the man, that, most likely, that's walking with it. 16. Therefore will the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness. And under his glory there shall be kindled a burning like the burning of fire. And this is what's going to happen in the end times. These All these ones that are made fat. Told you they was making themselves fat. God's fattening them up. See, God's been fattening them up. But now, leanness, see, leanness. And under his glory there shall be kindled a burning, like a burning of fire. And we're going to find that's what's going to happen. This is like a burning, a burning of fire. We'll find out in the end the law's going to come through and devour all. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. What? This light of Israel, this light even, that's given unto all the world. What's it for? A fire. And the holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. And that's what's exactly going to happen. The slide of Israel was the law. And God is the flame thereof. And we're going to find out God's going to flame this, fan this flame. God's going to fan this flame. And the glory of his forest and his fruitful field, he will consume both soul and body, and it shall be as when a sick man wastes away. So like a dying man wasting away, and this glory of his forest, his fruit fulfilled, he will consume it, soul and body, see, because God has, we're going to find, see, God has set this up, God has made this for one purpose only, 19, and the remnant of the trees of his forest shall be a few, that a child may write them down, and this is what he's going to do, these, all those trees, these great ones who think they're made of forest now, God's going to lop all the tops off. You're going to be made, brought low like the acts of Gideon's come through and he's you and we're even going to find this that a child may write them down. That even a little kid can walk over it, straddle it, knock it down, make it lay over. 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that a remnant of Israel and they that are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon them that smote them but shall stay upon the Lord the Holy One of Israel in truth. See God. Stay upon God. No longer this one that's been used to correct you. They're no longer staying upon this king of Assyria. And we're going to find out this is just an example. For God used him now as, as judgment. God's brought it as judgment. And when the people understand this, they will return to God. And they'll return to the law of God. For this is the great example of all. 21. A remnant shall return, even the remnant of Ye Jacob, and unto God the mighty. And a small remnant will return. We're going to find out. See, because only a few is going to hear. Only a few is going to listen. It's already written. For though your people, O Israel, be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them shall return. And extermination is determined, overflowing with righteousness. And that's what God's been making, see for many generations now an extermination exterminating 
is this the wish of God? No, this is what men are doing, see, with their mouth, with the teachings of falsehood, with the teachings of idolatry. But it's of the wrath of God now because you do error, that you have turned from the law of God. Your society shows, and there's no place you can hide it. See, this extermination is determined, and it's overflowing with righteousness. This is judgment and truth. 23. For an extermination wholly determined shall the Lord, the God of hosts, make in the midst of all the earth. And because this is the end time example. These are the prophecies of the end. This is the example God made. Because it's an extermination. And it's determined in the midst of all the earth. It's not limited to one place. God was going to show his hand mighty and his work marvelous in all the earth. 24, therefore thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of Asher, though he smite you with the rod and lift up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt. Be not, my people, O my people, those that follow my law, those that, that do according, those that dwell in Zion, this parched place, even this place God has parched, set for an example. Don't be afraid of Asher, this step, this altar, this progress they've made. He may smite you with the rod. He may be using his strength against you. He may have lifted up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt, after this manner of the, this place of enclosures. Even this place, we're going to find out that God is going to be comparing to Egypt because he's been using it all the way through. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall be accomplished, and mine anger shall be to their destruction. For yet a little while, and the indignation, this anger, this wrath that God had stored up, why? Well, they contempt the Holy One of Israel. They treated him like he was nothing. They treated God like he didn't matter at all. Who's God? Who's what? Who's God? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they remember him. But they don't remember his law. They forget about it. And this is what's made the anger of God so great in the earth. 26. The Lord of hosts shall stir up against him a scourge. And as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb, as his rod was over the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. As his rod was over the sea, well, we remember there, he parted the waters, he divided the waters there, and the people went over dry shod to escape this land of Egypt. See, but the slaughter of Midian, this is, was the slaughter where... At the Rock of Oreb, and this Rock of Oreb is, is um, the Oreb is the raven, and this is that that one. It's darkened. This one that that was sent forth even from the ark that went to and fro. There at the Rock of Oreb, remember Gideon. Gideon was there. Gideon was this one who came there and and slayed the Midianites. God used him for this great example even there. But we all remember what happened to Gideon. Yeah, he made him an ephod and set him up a little tabernacle there. 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall depart from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed by reason of fatness. See, well, they've made themselves fat. God did this, though. Remember, God fattened them up. God did it so sooner or later they have to be made known, and we're getting ready to find that out. They've made themselves known now by reason of fatness. And this is what's finally going to be the end of it. This is what's finally going to be the end of, of everything they've done. Twenty-eight. He has come to Aiaf. He has passed through Migron. At Mechmas he lays up his baggage. 
He's passed through he uh, this place of ruins, this place of the heaps of ruins, and me grand the precipice. Me grand it means this precipice even, this this highest point. But this highest point is also known as this place of casting down. See, that's what that place is for. For the place to, for the casting down. That's why God made the precipice. And he lays up his bag, baggage at Mi'kmaq. Mi'kmaq is this hidden storage. Mi'kmaq is the place of his hidden storage. Twenty-nine there are gone over the pass. They have taken up their lodging at Gaba. Ramah trembles. Gibeath Shah is fled. And there they do. They, they are lodged at Gibeah, this hill, this place that's lifted up. And Ramah trembles. Ramah was that, that even that high place, even the holy high place at, back in the early times. And Gibeath of Shaw is fled. Gibeath of Shaw. Gibeath is also means hill. We have three words for hill, or that those places are lifted up. These places men have lifted up. Gibeath of Shaw was the part of Gibeah where Saul lived. Saul means desired. This hill of the desired is fled. God's called it. God is in the midst now. 30. Cry you with a shrill voice, O daughter of Galim. Hearken, O Laish. O you poor of Anathoth. Cry you with a shrill voice, O you daughter of the rolling springs. Galim, rolling springs, this water, the boiling. Listen, a lion. Oh, you poor Anathoth. Anathoth, this answer of prayer. 31. Madman oh, is a mad flight. The inhabitants of Gabim flee to cover. Madman oh, the place of the dunghill, is in mad flight. And the inhabitants of the cisterns flee to cover. We know what this is. Dung hill. This is the place where they all, everybody used to take their dung and cast it. Outside the city. Even this place of cisterns. 32. This very day shall he halt it no. Shaking his hand at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. This very day, standing there shaking his hand at this, at, at, at Nob. Nob means this fruitful place. This place of the fruit. It's just outside in Jerusalem. Just outside this place of peaceful teachings. He's shaking his hand at the hill of Jerusalem, at the height of this, at this lifted up place even of the peaceful teachings. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bows with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the lofty shall be laid low. When? In this great day of the Lord. See, the Lord of hosts does this. The Lord of hosts raises up, and we're going to find the Lord of hosts bring it down. For one purpose was it made, and that's the purpose of we're going to find out at the end time. It's, it's a black, it's a dark day. It's not a bright day. It's not a shiny day. It's not a day of happiness. 34. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron. And Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. These thickets of, of the forest, these thickets we found out now, be burned by the fire of God, be burned by the law when it comes through. This forest of iron. This is the iron rod of God. This is how God is going to use. We're going to find out in the end now. He's made a threshing instrument of iron. And he does thresh the nations with it. In Lebanon, this place that was made white. This place that is made to be white. It's not white. It shall fall by the mighty one. See, uh, this was the purpose in the whole time. God is going to make an example. God is even setting marvelous work and has done a marvelous work in the world. 
we're going to find out it wasn't just for Israel. He's going to do it in all the world, all the earth, making an example now, even for his end time, where God will return and once again destroy the wicked of the earth with those that have set themselves up, those that have made themselves a place to exact upon the people, to gather the, all the riches of the people to themselves. See, that's what they do. That's the that's how the government works. That's how these institutions of spiritualness work. See, they gather well. They gather to themselves. They exact upon you, but nobody exacts upon them. God's coming. God's coming. He's got judgment. He's already here, and it's in the land now. See, this is what goes before God. When you error, turn now and return to God and see if he won't drive all this out from before you. All right, let's go to chapter 11.